This is my review of the Cheetahs by Hogs. Uh, this review has given me a terrible, terrible time. I've been trying to film it for six months. I've been trying to figure out what I want to say about these wheels for six months. I've been trying to figure out the right setup to skate these wheels for, hell, I don't know, nine months? Basically, I bought these on Black Friday uh, in 2020. I skated them the day that they arrived on some chill grip runs with the homies, and I felt fast. I felt super cool, but it wasn't good science. It wasn't good testing. You know, I felt fast, but also I am kind of fast, you know, in my circles and my, I don't know if this would be. I really reluctantly skated these from December until April. I tried a handful of times to really sink my teeth into them, and every single time left the session a little bit more confused, and I didn't feel like I was going any faster than any other run. I didn't feel like I was experiencing a sensation crazy unique. I mean, other than having a really big, big, a really big, really hard little wheel. You know, you might think that this is a soft wheel. It's got the 76A outer urethane, and uh, for those who aren't following, this has the 90A inner urethane. This is the purple one, uh, and it's hard. It's really hard. It's really rigid. Uh, this contact patch does not want to deform, uh, not over anything significant. I will say, I think I've started to understand what this tread urethane is for. It's meant to soak up the kind of stuff when you put your face down close to a road and you see kind of the micro texture of the road, that. Uh, you don't feel micro texture with this wheel. I'm sorry I said that word. That's pretentious. It's not a very good word, um, but I, I said it and I might say it again. You really only feel the bigger stuff, you know, a bigger pebble that comes through <laughs> or a crack or a pothole. Bigger features than that, like kind of waves in the pavement and larger bumps, they really treat those kind of like any other big wheel. It's the, the in-between stuff like cracks and bumps and rough patches that these start to get very unsettled by because the wheel can't deform. Like I, I can't flex the lips in a meaningful way. You might be able to see a tiny bit of compression there, but to me, I don't feel like I'm doing any work trying to squeeze that down. Um, they are rigid, rigid, rigid. And so when you do hit those things, uh, something that has a defined point in time, not like a rough patch that you go over for five seconds, but like a crack that you just hit uh, the wheel hits it and jumps. There's there's not a lot of absorption there. Um, I will say it did surprise me on a surface that was like kind of rough overall, but nobody would describe it as rough. You know, we're getting back to the micro texture. You get in, you look at it, the road, and you know, it's got jagged all throughout it, but it's all the same amount of jaggedness. This wheel felt great and nice and predictable and easy to slide on that but it just wasn't gripping. It wasn't sticking into the road. And then um, you hit a corner with a rough patch in it. And for some reason, every corner had a very bad rough patch in it at that particular skate spot. Um, and oh my goodness, it would just lose traction. It would just ice way out to the outside, um, but not in an unpredictable way, not in a sudden snap way like you may be familiar with, with other very high rebound, very hard wheels. I mean, it's just kind of gently floated its way to the outside. I won't even start saying ice anymore. It is kind of like a float feeling. It's got enough mass that it's incredibly predictable. Your board doesn't move very quickly with these wheels on it. And I'm not talking about straight line speed. I'm talking about little jerks and bumps, sudden impulses from your body, from your feet, from the pavement. But there's no big core to subtract a lot of the weight like you find in the Venom Magnums or the Seismic Alphas. Uh, this is a really teeny, teeny, tiny core, and you might be thinking, no, 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 the, the 90A core, right, is huge. It goes all the way out to the edges. No, that doesn't hold the bearing in place. Doesn't mean it's a true core. The actual core is this cheapo little shit in there uh, that's literally straight out of a Cordova. It's an off-the-shelf core that you get from one of these urethane wheel manufacturers. I'm not surprised that they use that because simply put, it's cheaper. And this is a $90 wheel with a cheap core in it. Put a nice core in it, you've got a $100 wheel or more. And now the people are upset and nobody's buying your wheel because it is $20 more than the next competitor. Well, the wheel apocalypse 
of September 2021 is among us, and now $90 wheel for a really, really good, very durable, might I add, uh, great durability. The skin lasts forever. Look, the lips are in great condition. I've been thrashing this, by the way. It's 76A, it doesn't round over. Nice, I like it. Um, yeah, we're in wheel apocalypse. So now a $90 race wheel doesn't seem that bad anymore, does it? I'm sure it's gonna jump up to 130 bucks. That seems like the best predictions out there for what this wheel is going to jump to. I've had a couple people, you know, in the industry kind of say something or another. Yeah, I'm kind of industry man myself. I'm a big deal. Hey, yo, little break. You can tell it's a little break because the colors have flipped on my face. This is just to say, if you're enjoying the video, give it a like. Yeah, if you like a video, YouTube will show it to you later if you don't finish it all. My videos are long. Sometimes you get distracted. Sometimes you have something else to do. You can't finish it. Like the video, YouTube will show it to you later. And then also subscribe. I've got a lot more really cool gear reviews in the works. I'm working on the Quay Free Killers right now, the red ones, the Flow Thane ones. That's gonna be a super interesting review. And in addition, we got the big Thaners, the big 85 mil Thaners. That's all I'm gonna say. If you follow me on Instagram, you will probably know what those already are. Owen Campbell 777 on Instagram. You can follow me there. Get a little sneak peek. Sometimes I talk about gear there. Sometimes I kind of drop hints as to what I'm feeling about a certain wheel and what's coming out next. Uh, a lot more direct platform for us to communicate on there. So shoot me a message, DM. You want to ask about gear? You want to just talk about skating? Want to learn about the Cincinnati, Ohio scene and how you can get involved in our sessions? Let me know. But yeah, check out my Instagram, subscribe and like the video. Now that we've done all the basic bitch YouTube things, let's get back to the review and swap these colors back around. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to probably be 130 bucks pretty soon. That doesn't mean buy it now because you don't want to be stuck with a wheel that doesn't work for you. Um, but consider that. They're not going to be $90 forever. I would like you to say in the comments, uh, I was here while cheetahs were $90. So that when people look at it in the future and go, oh, cheetah's a good wheel, they're gonna see your comment and just reminisce about the old times. You know, our parents talk about, our grandpappies talk about the five cent ice creams and the two cent movies. So yeah, they grip when you want, they slide when you want, a nice wheel, go buy them. No, you have to have a good board for it. And it, it sucks that it comes down to this because I don't like this being a truth of downhill, if you put it on your ordinary gear, you say your cast trucks or even fuck savants, I had such a hard time skating this wheel on savants. Um, it just doesn't have the geometry. It doesn't have the design to put up with the loads that this wheel imparts on you, the grip, the force. Um, and that sucks. That's why it took me so long in a sense to make this review is because I, I needed to wait until I had the right setup to ride this wheel. Um, and it's made me even doubt the validity of my Quay Killer review because I did that on my Madrid Nessie, you know, that eight ply maple free ride board and my Paris Savants, which are just, you know, they're kind of just like cash trucks plus. Um, I'm thinking that maybe there's a ton of performance that I've left on the table because I couldn't touch that performance uh, with this wheel until I got my carbon board, until I got my precision trucks. And then I could extract that. Thank you, carbon board. Thank you, trucks. You're doing some of the work here, but this wheel didn't let me unlock it until I had a board and trucks that would respond appropriately, that wouldn't, you know, wouldn't flex, wouldn't rotate out of the ordinary pivot axes that both of those things are supposed to operate on meaning that this wheel could have all of its pressure very very even across the contact patch smooshing it into the road you have to have a good setup to ride this wheel and i'm sorry by good setup them trucks better be at least 300 dollars, and that deck better be at least two i say that there are some very affordable rigid decks out there don't hold me accountable to that. So what else is there to say? They're durable, I mentioned that earlier, but they're very durable, really uh, durable in a lovely way. Um, you would think it wouldn't last very long, you know, there's this little hairline of gray urethane that the wheel comes with from the factory, but that's there for a long time. It's hard to wear down. Additionally, they're relatively predictable, you know, when paired with the right kind of pavement. Pavement that looks smooth, 
it's gonna be pretty predictable on assuming you've got that right setup. Um, the really glassy pavements, the really smooth pavements, those perfect surfaces, these 90A hogs are going to grip mercilessly. You're gonna have to have good technique, really, really proper technique, one without pitfalls, one without compromises. Otherwise, this wheel is gonna get you. And I think it's a forgiving wheel. I don't think it's that hard to ride. You just gotta be strong. And when paired with the right board and the right pavement, you have to be even stronger and sure of yourself. Meaning, maybe it's not a good open road wheel. Maybe it's not a good wheel when you're riding in conditions where you're not that confident. Oh, here's a good question. Would this be a good Mary Hill wheel? I went to Mary Hill and I didn't pack these because I was scared of the weight limit in my luggage. That's how heavy these are. I don't think these would be a very great Mary Hill wheel, uh, especially not for racing, because I think a very strong part of Mary Hill, a very important part, is getting the draft, uh, being really effective at using other people's drafts to make passes, quick acceleration, things like that. Um, because these accelerate so slowly, you get into somebody's draft and it takes a while to develop the speed to make a pass on them. Um, these seem like the kind of wheels where you try to get out front early and stay out front by asserting dominance of being able to grip lines that other wheels can't. This doesn't feel like a drafting wheel. Um, and as a result, maybe it's not that good for lighter riders. I feel like you have to be heavy to compress this wheel. I can only presume that's why they came out with the lean cheetahs. I'm hoping I can get my hands on a set for review sometime. Not sure when that will be. I've got a really big stock of shit to review right now. I'm very, very fortunate that that is the case. However, the lean cheetahs, they're narrower cut, um, they seem a little bit more offset. This is a very center set wheel, relatively. And as a matter of fact, when compared with the Magnums. Now, despite having a wider contact patch, 71 millimeters versus 70 millimeters, the Cheetahs are actually closer to center set than the Magnums. We're looking at eight and three eighths here versus the Magnums are sitting at uh, a little over eight and five eighths. So we're talking about 0.3 of an inch difference between the track width that you get with the Cheetahs versus the Magnum. So you can kind of see it here. There's more of the hanger exposed on that side than this side. For reference, I've got my truck set at 116 millimeters for this demonstration. Usually that's a little more narrow than I like to ride them at. Um, but for this demo, that's what we're sitting at. If you're trying to push these around, you know, a board that you've regularly pushed around town, pushing to the local spot. These suck. They're hard. You're going to feel all the crap, like sidewalk crack, stuff like that. Uh, they're so heavy. These are the slowest wheels to push. Um, they, You could say they hold their speed well, but that it's kind of, I don't know. That's a hard metric to measure. I haven't had parking garages where I've enjoyed these wheels just yet. Maybe I haven't been to a big, bad enough, fast enough one, but they're... They're so wide and parking garages are often very dusty. Um, so a dusty garage plus a wide contact patch means you're really gonna be fighting for grip if you kind of deviate from the cleanest lines. Uh, and even then the cleanest lines are usually covered in their own layer of dust. So these do slide around in the parking garages, do lose speed. So as much as you think this big, slow, accelerating, heavy wheel you know, it might have a rough start, but it's gonna pick up and carry its speed by the bottom. It's gonna grip like hell on the smooth parking garage pavement. You are almost right until you factor in dust, uh, which has thrown off so many calculations and equations over time. Astronomical all the way down to the microscopic. Dust fucks these up. They're no good on dust. So now to summarize who I think would benefit from this wheel. So. Let's first discuss rider type. No lightweight riders. Uh, you, you have to have a lot of weight to properly get this wheel to dig to engage a contact patch. I don't like this distinction. It's a little bit elitist, but more casual riders, people who just want a fast wheel. Um, I don't think this is the option for you. I think that there are other wheels that are more versatile, easier to slide. Uh, the Muriscape Fat Boys come to mind. I mean, get that real gushy soft wheel with a nice consistent slide. This wheel also has a consistent slide, but you're gonna be working really hard 
and it's not going to suit any environment. In my mind, a casual rider is somebody who just wants to put on one big wheel, have only one big, large, grippy downhill wheel in their collection, and just going to use it everywhere. The Cheetahs are not that wheel. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, cross that off. I think to get the most out of this wheel, you really have to be race-minded in the way that you practice, in the way that you use these, either using them exclusively at races or exclusively for practicing race technique. Um, it's kind of hard to justify their use for anything in between. There's not a lot of other places or reasons why I would ride this wheel. I think you have to be pretty skilled to get your money's worth out of this wheel. I just feel like I wasn't able to get what I needed out of this wheel early on. I feel like I really wasted the condition of the wheel, the brand new wheel when it had skin and lips. I couldn't make the most of it. And in fact, it discouraged me from riding it so much that I just took it to some rough roads, really chowed down on it, destroyed the contact patch, destroyed the lips so that I could use it a lot more casually. But I really think you need to have a modern downhill setup, something that is very rigid, something with modern trucks with a good slop stopping mechanism, you know, something that is tried and tested by the community. I'm not going to endorse any trucks right now because I'm still on that journey of figuring out what I like, what doesn't work for me, how to tune a modern downhill slalom truck like that. But if you are riding anything less than that, I feel like these wheels are kind of going to be a waste. I'm sorry to say that. Um, I don't mean to hold these as some elite pinnacle wheel but unfortunately they seem like they were designed for the top of the best of gear of performance of riders um, and it's a it's a waste to use them for anything less now this is a really good question because i keep talking about their race performance i keep talking about them being like a very race bred wheel designed with racing in mind not casual skating but that being said, I don't think that they're just the best race wheel at any track. I think it is going to suit specific places very well. Firstly, it has to be a long track. I think that's the scenario in which the way that these wheels hold their speed over distance is gonna really help you out. I think it's also gotta be a pretty fast race too. We're talking 40 miles an hour and faster. I don't think that you'll be able to get the acceleration to make a slower track like that worthwhile. If you are only peaking at 35 miles an hour or 30 miles an hour, odds are it's a place that you're going to benefit from a quick acceleration off the line, not from a sustained roll speed. I also think that this wheel demands fast corners to really extract its advantage over other wheels. This wheel grips so, so, so well, but it doesn't accelerate very well. So if you're going to a race that has a pretty slow hairpin in it, you know, a big drift where you grip up and are kind of going pretty slowly to hang an apex through a hairpin. This wheel is not going to accelerate enough coming out of that hairpin to make up for the time. It really needs fast corners. I'm not saying it has to be a grip run, uh, one where you don't have to slide at all. However, I think that this wheel has immense braking and it has uh, immense grip that is best utilized with short braking zones at high speed. Now I think because of these other reasons I don't think that this wheel would be very suitable for most path races, at least the ones that I've been to, usually feature quick acceleration zones, tight hairpin corners, um, and you know the need to accelerate back out of that corner. And oftentimes a path race requires you to have a very good push off the start line. A lot of those races are determined by who pushes out first, and that's the simple truth of it. On a path, it is a very, very narrow piece of asphalt to deal with, to stay on, and making passes can be almost impossible even if you have a speed advantage over the rider in front of you. So I would not recommend them for path races simply because they don't have the acceleration. And pushing off the line, they are so heavy, you will be working really hard to get the same speed off the push as your opponent who's riding, let's say 75 millimeter seismic alphas. And as far as Chunder goes, I think you should generally avoid it on this wheel, at least the 90A version. Keep it to the really nice tracks, the really smooth ones. 
Most racetracks are chosen because of a combination of high speed, good corners, and good roads. However, not all races have good roads. So be thoughtful, keep that in mind. If you have things that you need to avoid, if you have bad bumps mid corner, that you really need to keep your composure over, this may not be the wheel for that road. Find something softer to suit that. And this list is far from perfect. I can think of a few things here. Uh, for one, fast corners. I talked about how a slow hairpin would not be very suited for this wheel because of the slow acceleration coming out of a slow hairpin. Like you have to cut a lot of speed and then get that speed back. Maybe the immense braking and immense cornering of this wheel means that you can slide much later and slide less. You can maintain more speed through the corner. So the loss in acceleration coming out of that hairpin is not gonna ding you as much. It's not gonna be as important. The placement of that hairpin in the duration of the race is also important too. That slow hairpin being up towards the top where you're working on your acceleration and then you have to lose all that speed through the hairpin and then accelerate to the rest of the course, that might reduce a lot more of your, um, you know, your overall time to complete that track than a hairpin that's right at the finish line. And there's not much time to accelerate before you cross the finish line. So these are some things to consider. Also, uh, high speed, you can make an argument that a 30 mile an hour race that is really long may also be an appropriate place for this because wind resistance is not as important. It means that the, uh, the way that your wheel resistance factors into the overall resistance, you know, you've got wheel resistance, bearing resistance, wind resistance. Please ignore that I said bearing resistance. Let's not have that conversation. But the wheel resistance is more of a factor at low roll speed uh, situations, like what your speed sustained during low speed wind. Oh, gosh. The rolling resistance is going to be much more important at a low speed versus a high speed. And so a very rigid wheel like this may lose little energy. I didn't actually test the rolling resistance. I don't actually know if it has more or less rolling resistance than its competitors. However, what I do know is that it kind of manages to hold its speed pretty well. So that could be really desirable at a slow track. So yeah, argue any point that I've made here in the comments. I'm going to be reading it. I'm interested in hearing what you think. And I know that a lot of my reasoning is far from perfect. It's all situational. It's why we have to think really hard about the decisions we make, the gear we test. And it's why I build up such a big collection of gear. It's because I want to find out all the situations where I want to use the gear. Folks, thank you so, so much for watching. If you choose to buy these wheels because of my review, let me know. That's cool for me to find out. I like hearing about that stuff. Uh, if you make any gear decision based on my reviews, tell me about it. I would love to hear what your thought process was. You know, something that doesn't work for me might work really well for you. And I, if you can hear that in my reviews, if you can discern something, me talking about, well, I don't, they don't really work for me in this way. I won't recommend this but you picked up things that worked for you and bought a product and have been riding it and you've been right because what I described was accurate. I want to hear that crap. It's a little chip on my shoulder. It's a little bit cool to hear that people are making real world decisions off the things that I talk about here. And then at the end of the day, if you're not buying shit because of me, but you just want to be here for the discussion about skateboarding, longboarding, community, gear, companies, uh, tell me about that too, because I appreciate that. I appreciate you. You are so wonderful. Thank you for returning to this channel. And for the new people, welcome to my channel. I'm happy to share this with you. I love this platform for our conversations because it, it attracts the most inquisitive minds, which sounds corny, but y'all ask really great questions. And there's a lot of learners here. We're all learning. I'm learning. This is a platform for helping me learn how to make YouTube videos, learning how to think about gear, really press deep into what makes a good, complete longboard setup. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me on this journey. I appreciate you so very much.
be 